The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. Good morning, everyone. First of all, I want to thank you all for giving us the opportunity to present our work here. This work um, has been done as part of my uh, PhD study at University of Miami. And it's a joint work with uh, Mr. Doug Gremmel at um, Hughes Brother Incorporation and uh, Dr. John Mayers at uh, University of uh, Missouri, University of Science and Technology, and uh, uh, Dr. Antonio Nanni from University of Miami. My presentation is on long-term durability of uh, GFRP internal reinforcement in concrete structures. In this presentation, I will briefly talk about the general ideas of uh, GFRP and the approach of durability study that we are taking in this specific study. I will talk briefly about the field structures that we chose as our case studies, the sample extraction preparation, and also the concrete and GFRP characterization, which is the main focus of our study. And at the end, I will finish with some conclusive remarks. As you may know, GFRP stands for glass fiber reinforced polymers. And GFRP bars are made of glass fibers as the load carrying members and resin, which protects the fiber and transfers the load among them. We all know that steel rebars are still the main and traditional reinforcement for concrete. But the steel suffers from the corrosion problem. The corrosion of black steel leads a lowers the service life of the structure and eventually leads to repair and maintenance costs and in some cases even safety issues. On the other hand, GFRP bars are emerging as an effective solution for resolving this problem, especially for the structures which are exposed to aggressive environments such as um, bridges or um, sea walls, marine structures, and they are offering several advantages. The most important for us is corrosion-resistant properties because it's a composite material. High strength to weight ratio, which is generally four times lighter than a steel. Magnetic transparency, which makes it an ideal case for, let's say, construction in MRI units in, at hospitals, and also, in some cases, ease of demolishing in some temporary applications. One thing that is going to help GFRP technology to get widespread applications, especially in construction and infrastructures, is providing more and more proof of its long-term durability. Because for any composite material in any application, long-term durability is a big concern. So I, this is the same in this case. Usually the approach that has been taken in, in the literature for approving the durability is trying to provide or let's say simulating the concrete atmosphere. So usually the solutions with high alkalinity and sometimes even elevated temperatures are provided to, for, the, for the GFRPs to be exposed to and then the residual mechanical properties are um, studied. But the approach that we are taking in this study is using the real samples from the real field structures and extracting them after years of service and investigating them to show that what has happened to them after, let's say, a decade of service or 20 years of service. And we believe that that is a real indication whether it has a long-term durability or not, and let's say what happened to them after 15 years. And as you may imagine, because of the difficulty of this type of um, project, let's say for the coordination for sample extraction, for the ownership problems and the safety issues, the traffic control, there are only a few type of studies. And um, the purpose of this specific study is to contribute more to this part of the literature. So for our study, two bridges, both in the city of Rowland, Missouri, has been chosen. One of them, which from the rest of the pr presentation, I will refer it to Walker. Walker Bridge is a box culvert bridge built in uh, 1999. And the other one, which I will refer to as a Southview Bridge, again, is in the same 
geographical location, and it has been built in 2004, and both of them incorporated GFRP as part of the construction. I will talk shortly about uh, these two structures. The Walker Bridge was built in 99, uh, 1999 in the city of Roland, Missouri, to replace the old bridge. Here you can see the, the old bridge, which was uh, made of concrete and uh, three encased uh, steel pipes, and it was unsafe to operate because of uh, the extensive corrosion of uh, steel pipes and also cracking in the concrete. The new bridge is made of um, 18 boxes in two rows of nine. The boxes are 1.5 by 1.5 meter and the thickness of 150 millimeter. And the total length of the bridge is 11 meter. The reinforced concrete boxes were made of concrete and the, the entirely numbered two GFRP bars. As you can see here in the picture at the uh, right, there is a GFRP cage completely made of number two GFRP bars and uh, that is the, basically the only reinforcement for these boxes. In order to, to uh, share with you what was the exposure of this bridge regarding the environmental situation, the bridge was um, exposed to thermal range of minus six to plus 32 degree of centigrade, wet and dry cycles, freeze thaw cycles, and also exposure to the icing salts. So fairly, it has been exposed to different types of um, extreme situations, and it can provide us um, a good case study. The next bridge, which I call it Southview Bridge, has been um, originally has been, bait, uh, has been built uh, with um, four cell steel reinforced concrete box culverts, but the bridge went through an expansion in 2004 with the addition of one um, additional lane and the sidewalk. And um, number three, four, and six GFRP bars has been used, and also number three prehistoric um, carbon FRB tendons in the construction of this bridge. In 2016, uh, expert personnel extracted uh, several concrete cores from these two structures at different locations. Uh, the structures were taken from uh, the bottom surface of the, GFR, uh, the GFRP box culverts, which logically has been exposed to more uh, moisture, and also from the, uh, at the bridge deck of the Southview Bridge. After the samples has been shipped to the University of Miami lab, we started uh, working on the samples and trying to extract the GFRP bars. And uh, as these bars are really valuable for us and we didn't want to lose any part of it, so it takes lots of patience to remove all the pieces of uh, GFRP in those cores. After the GFRP were taken out from the cores, before characterizing the GFRP itself, first we uh, provide a general characterization of the concrete itself to show that what has happened to concrete after uh, 12 and 17 years of service for these two cases, two bridges. So first, uh, the pH of the concrete was found to be in the range of 11 to 12, which is an expected range for the type of the uh, concrete and the age of the concrete. And also, we performed the um, chloride diffusion test and uh, carbonation dips, and uh, we found that there was no carbonation in the concrete cores and also no sign of uh, chloride diffusion. So while having no carbonation could be um, really an ideal case for steel rebars because it postpones the corrosion, but completely dif different, it's a really worse situation for the GFRP bars because whatever the alkalinity of the concrete core is higher and there is no carbonation, it provides a more severe case for the GFRP because GFRPs theoretically are supposed to be weak in alkaline solutions, alkaline environments. So from now, the main focus of our um, study started, which is the characterization of the GFRP itself. Different mechanical tests and um, um, microscopic examination has been performed on the extracted samples, which included the SCM analysis, EDS, and horizontal shear test, glass transition temperature, and also fiber content. And I will go through each of them one by one. So a scanning electron microscopy was performed, and the main purpose for that was to provide into the, even a single fiber level to see that what has happened to the microstructure of these composite materials. As you can see here in this picture, this is the SCM in two different magnification levels, and uh, I need to say that we have performed the SCM uh, for several samples and for several locations, random locations, and here I'm presenting only representative samples. 
So the picture at the left is uh, in the magnification level of uh, 200, and the one at the right is at 800 magnification. And as you can see here, and also in the next page, which is the same situation, but a slightly higher magnification for the Southview Bridge, which are the, the left one, the 500 magnification and 1400 magnification. So basically, if you see this photo, which is taken out after 17 years of service, and this one, after 12, 12 years of service, basically nothing has happened to the microstructure of these GFRP bars. I think this is really one of the strongest evidence that we can provide that these materials are durable and in a real field application, they can be a proper solution for a, a corrosion of the black steel rebars. So as I mentioned, no apparent sign of deterioration in the fibers, matrix, and also fiber matrix inter interface was observed. Glass fibers appear to be intact with no loss of cross-sectional areas, as you can see in those two pictures. And we take it one step further, we performed the EDS analysis, and the purpose for EDS analysis was uh, to provide the existing um, chemical elements in these materials uh, to see whether uh, there was any sign of attack of any chemical or alkaline uh, elements. And again, we saw no sign of uh, chemical attack. This, the fibers that, the elements that we found in these two samples, these two representative samples, were the element that we generally expect from um, GFRP samples, right? So there were silicon, aluminum, and calcium mainly, which are the main components of the glass fiber, and also carbon and, of course, the oxygen for uh, the resin itself. And it was the same situation for both bridges. From, from now, our tests are mainly the mechanical point of view and not the microstructure anymore. One of the, the most interesting one for us was the horizontal shear strengths. This plays a really important role as an indication of durability because horizontal shear, as you can imagine, deals with the mechanical properties at the interface of uh, fibers and resin. And any kind of degradation, we can see a proper site at the interface and then the loss of bond between the fibers and resin and eventually losing the load carrying properties. So horizontal shear strength was really important for us, but um, unfortunately for this specific uh, bridge, there was no historical data for the exact GFRP bars used in the construction. So to be able to compare that. So what we did was we performed um, the same test with the same um, setup on the samples produced by the same manufacturer in 2015 and use them as a benchmark of comparison. Because generally, we expect the technology to become better and better during years. So with this type of comparison, this is even a more conservative type of comparison because we expect that it has been improved. So the test has been performed following the ASTM standard D4475. And um, the test was performed only on the samples from the Southview Bridge because um, the test stage was not available to perform the test for the samples taken out from the Walker Bridge because they, were, they had a really a small diameter. So in the samples performed for this bridge, uh, really interestingly, the result was 5% uh, higher than the average result we performed on the control samples. So again, I need to mention that maybe this 5% increase is not a real increase because we are not comparing the like apple to apple exactly. But the least thing we can say is that for sure there was no degradation and the property was in the same range. The next test we performed was um, dynamic mechanical analysis, DMA, to uh, investigate the glass transition temperature. That parameter is also really critical for us because this is the temperature which beyond that temperature, uh, GFRP bars loses their ability to transfer the load dramatically because the state of the resin changes from solid to liquid type of uh, stage. So the dynamic mechanical analysis was performed following the ASTM E1640. And um, again, the result, the same as the shear test, was compared to the samples produced with the, from the same manufacturer but produced in 2015. And again, what we found that approximately 25% of uh, increase in the transition glass temperature during the years. And we saw the same type of result for different studies that we performed. And um, the reason we believe that this increase can happen is 
the additional curing of the resin over time with the exposure to sun and um, cross-linking the uh, polymer. So again, this is another sign that uh, this critical parameter of GFRP bars has not been degraded at all after 17 and 12 years of service. And finally, the fiber content. The fiber content was performed following the ASTM D2584, and the result again were compared for, with the test produced in 2015. The measured fiber content, as you can imagine, were, uh, was exactly in the expected range and still well beyond uh, the minimum requirement of 70% uh, by mass. So the results were 82 and 73%, which are in the exact range that we expect to see the fiber content ratio. So as a conclusion, uh, as I mentioned, GFRP and concrete samples were extracted from two bridges, both of them more than a decade old. First, the concrete was tested and um, the, pH, the pH was in the expected range. The no carbonation and chloride diffusion was observed in the concrete. And next, the different mechanical tests and microscopy examination was performed to provide the evidence of the durability of this material. So microscopy examination did not show any sign of GFRP degradation or any, nor any sign of um, chemical attacks to these materials. And in sense of mechanical properties, the horizontal shear strengths showed 5% of increase compared to the benchmark values. And the same case for the glass transition temperature and also the fiber content was in the exact expected range. So the main message of our study is GFRP is a durable material and this study shows that after years of service, it's basically nothing has happened to this material. And specifically for structures which are exposed to aggressive environment, as I mentioned, such as marine structures, bridges, seawalls, this could be a perfect uh, and effective solution for removing the uh, corrosion problem of the steel rebars. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any question, I would be happy to answer. I do have one sure. question, and that was just with regard to the uh, the mic my, yes. microscope uh, pictures. I noticed there were lots of white spots on those yes. pictures. Yes. So, and we guess oh that might have been deterioration. But yes. what was that? Uh, so did, uh, because I was also I was also suspicious about them, but I compared them with them uh, because uh, first of all, like sample preparation for this type of. Um, materials because it has been made of two components which has a completely different hardness, the resin and the fibers, is a re really sensitive procedure. And with a slight change of sample preparation, the sample can be not good for SCM observation. So and in any human um, sample preparation, there is a consistency, right? So in order to be consistent, I performed the same procedure on uh, controlled samples and I, like pristine samples, right? No. Uh, deterioration, nothing. And uh, those spot uh, dots were also still there because, and in the EDS, we don't see that there are like chemical uh, changes. So mainly they are uh, like the, um, the rough roughness of the part of the roughness of the surface, which, um, and you can see that. Let me show you here in this image. So I have done a better work in polishing probably. And in this one, it was uh, slightly more spots and also some residues that stays there after like during the cleaning and those are those and this one actually it's the perfect uh, evidence that there are not any additional like elements or chemical attacks yeah do you have any information about the concrete mix that they used in those bridges and uh, is that information published and the other thing is um, i'm i'm really uh, not sure if the the argument that there was a five percent increase in the mm -hmm. shear strength is, sure. is really valid. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know what the yeah. original material was, and I, I'm wondering if there was uh, degradation. Is any of the other tests that you have done can say that we don't have any indication that the shear strength would have suffered? I completely agree with you. As I mentioned, the 
perfect situation would be having the exact uh, samples, and we had the same situation for a different bridge in um, Texas, and uh, we compared the shear test with the same shear test data which has been performed in 15 years ago, right? And those are the perfect evidence. But uh, still, another argument is these tests, we cannot perform these tests in a lot, like several rep repetition of samples because we cannot core more than a certain amount of samples, definitely, right? So at the end, there would be a limited samples, and especially in a shear, transfer shear test, lot by lot and production, lot by production, lot uh, slightly, the, there is a variation, by even by 10%, 15%. So um, this is part of like the, the general, uh, let's say, a statistical evaluation error, and even if we have the historical data from the exact GFRP bars used in that bridge, but we are not sure that is the same bar or not that we are taking out. So again, we may see a slightly difference, a slightly increase. I agree with you that there may not be an exact increase of 5%, but at least we were happy that it is not showing us that there were dramatic or even significant like reduction of strings. And the same, uh, to answer your other question, yeah, the same situation we saw in uh, the other tests that we performed. Please uh, join me in thanking.